All right, it's morning time. I'm having my caffeine kick. Gorgie's looking at me. What are you doing, Gorgie? So we decided we really hated the tiles there, so we're having them knocked off and replaced. And you can see on the floor there, there's a big black bit of stone. These guys are the stone fitters for the kitchen, so that's getting sorted out right now. I've been trying to make a video for the last couple of days, but I decided the stuff I was filming was just too boring and quit halfway through. Yesterday I kept getting sidetracked and going off on rants about politics and I thought, nah, I can't put that on. So yeah, look, um, this bathroom's getting done. Plumbing's been done a couple of days ago. Like shower, toilet, sink, and then all the, the drains as well. So over the past week or so, I've started the process of leveling out the mud all around the side of the bungalow. So you can see around there, it's starting to look quite nice and flat around the side. So that's been like a really big job, really hard work. And I've had a few people helping me to, to shift all that mud around. Obviously it was a bit too hard work. None of them want to come back. So maybe we'll have to finish it off. Me and Penn will have to finish that off. So I've been trying to think what to put here to finish it off and make it look nice. I've got all the pipes buried down in here now and all covered with sand. So that's all at the right level and ready to go. I was thinking maybe I could just put stones here that would probably be the cheapest option. The issue I've got though is if I put stones here, how do I stop them falling down there? Because I don't want stones in the grass because it's difficult to cut the grass when it's full of stones. Grass cut flicks stones up at you, it's kind of dangerous. So, so this is the issue. I'm trying to think, how do I, I've got to send water away from the house. So I think I need it sloping down that way slightly. I've got to stop stones going in the grass. So what do I do? One of the neighbors suggested we can put some concrete paving stones around the side. Yeah, I, I think that is probably the best idea. I haven't seen them yet. I've got to go and have a look at them, see what they look like, see how much they cost. Um, and hopefully it's not too expensive. I'm hoping to finish off around the bungalow for about like 1,000 pounds. But I've come to the conclusion that it is worth spending a little bit more money here. Maybe I'll go up to 2,000 or something because for the bang for the buck, the amount of like livable area you get for the money, it's like drastically increasing the size of our outside area. So I think this is an area where it's best not to skimp too much. I've got to make sure I get this looking nice. So that leads me on to my next subject, which I'll try to cover without going off on political rants. Um, so, so certainly here on the farm, we're still in the, like the setup process. We're getting things sorted out and we're in the building process and you know, later down the line comes more of like the living process and that's the bit I'm really looking forward to. You know, I'm, I don't want to be building bungalows. This is like a real headache. But, um, you know, later on things are going to be a bit more relaxed. I'm looking forward to growing a bit more of my own food. So all down here before and all down this one here was all vegetable patches going right the way to the bottom. But I've had them all bulldozed out. And the reason is if you have too many bushes everywhere, you attract more snakes. And I don't want to attract snakes into our farm and into our house near us and the dogs. What my idea is eventually to grow our plants, some of them like around the bungalow here, and that's why I wanted the walkway. And then I could also put some along here, have them all grown in like big pots. And it means that we won't be creating bushes everywhere for snakes to come and make their home in it or whatever they do. So that's one of the reasons why I wanted to have a big area all the way around the bungalow. So we could have somewhere to grow our tomatoes, cucumbers or whatever else it is we want to grow. So I also had loads of lemongrass growing all the way along here, but I'm getting this guy to dig it out at the moment. Got it going all the way down to the back. So again, like snakes can come right the way down this bush and like towards the house. So I, I don't want loads of bushes everywhere. So these days, quite often, we're all eating food that's shipped from other countries, you know, thousands of miles away on occasion. Sometimes for things like bananas, well, you have no choice but to ship it from the tropics to your you know, more temperate climate or whatever. But so often we're also shipping tomatoes halfway around the world and green beans are coming from Kenya and all, you know, from Africa up to Europe, they're shipping green beans. And, you know, we're perfectly capable of growing tomatoes and green beans. Well, where I come from in England, we're perfectly capable of growing these products. So I think it's completely crazy that we're shipping them from thousands of miles away. We should be growing them ourselves and eating things that are a bit more local to us. And also, you know, it's better for the environment to not ship it all around the world on like 
cargo ships. I think that's just like really crazy, right? I was talking to my dad on the phone the other day and it occurred to me that I haven't taken you guys around and shown you what other food products we've got here on the farm at the moment. So I'm gonna take you around and show you a little bit of that. So yeah, here just recently, got the first bananas started to flower just about a week ago. So that's good news. We've been waiting for this for a few months. Then over here by the house, we've got three papaya trees growing. These are really huge, these things. Look at the size of that. Some different variety up there. So I'll cut to a bit of footage I took yesterday to show you a few more of the plants we've got around here. So we've got banana and papaya. That's like half decent breakfast taken care of, I think. This plant here is, well, it's, it's a narcotic. I think it's called kratom. It was illegal in Thailand, but I think now you are allowed to kind of grow it and whatever. I haven't had any of it myself. I probably won't. This kind of thing normally doesn't agree with me. So um, generally speaking, I don't drink, I don't smoke because it just makes me feel sick. So, um, but yeah, what I was reading on Wikipedia is like you have a small amount. It's got like a stimulant cocaine effect. If you have a lot, it's got like an, an opiate effect. So yeah, people do abuse this plant kind of thing. I'm not sure if abuse is quite the right word, but anyway, people partake in it, let's say. Um, so the popular thing that they do with it is they make like an energy drink out of this stuff. They, they boil the leaves and then they mix it with Coca-Cola and cough syrup. And I think it's called, the name of it's four by 100. You can look it up on Wikipedia if you want. I'll leave the link. Often the workers come in, they're doing work and they're, they're drinking that concoction made from that. So also on that subject, recently in Thailand, it's been legalized that you can grow six cannabis plants. So we've got one over there, it's, it's doing all right, I guess. So yeah, at the moment you're allowed to grow six cannabis plants. Well, I'm not, because I'm not a Thai citizen, but my wife is, so she's allowed to do that. So you're not supposed to grow the cannabis plants that you can get high off, and you're not supposed to be getting high off them, but I'm, I'm sure people do. Um, and from what I've seen, a lot of my neighbors around here have cannabis plants, and I'm not sure if they smoke them or not, but they again, they, they boil the leaves and they make a tea out of it. So that's, that's probably what we'll do with that. See if we can make ourselves a bit of tea or something. Um, even before coronavirus came along, I've never really liked living in cities because it's just, for me, it just feels like there's too many people around and I I prefer a bit of peace and quiet. But also, you know, I think to myself, well, if anything, if anything did happen, everyone's gonna go completely nuts and I'd rather be somewhere else when, if and when that happens. So, so yeah, you know, given the choice, I, I'm, I'm gonna choose a, a rural environment over a city like all day, every day. So we've also got a jackfruit tree here. This is a special variety of jackfruit. It's not like the normal one and it, it's, it's much nicer than the normal one. I recently pruned it and it caused the tree to, to drop all the fruits, but never mind. Oh, we've still got one hanging on down the back there, so show you that down there. It was getting way too bushy, so I had to do something. But normally this tree's very productive and the fruit that comes off that's really delicious as well. Big bamboo plant there. I don't know if we can eat that or not, but... And these are either called uh, Lang Sat or Long Gone. These are in season at the moment, so these we don't have all year round, but right now we can eat those chili bushes in there very nice very spicy those chilies i like those so we've got two mangosteen mancut this is my new favorite i'll see if i get one down so yeah new tripod head there to replace the one that bung bung chewed i did try to warn him about this earlier but he wasn't listening to me if you bite it it's yo ass bung bung not listening no not not allowed to buy this. Bung bung, sit down. Sit down. Studs are a nightmare in the car. Let's just turn the windscreen wipers on for me. If we put them in the back together, they'll start fighting and I don't know what the answer is. So you get your Poseidon's trident like this. Put it like that on the fruit and then twist and it pops it off the branch. Delicious but seasonal. Things like this, once they're gone, they're gone. You've got to wait till next year. So, rambutan, mangosteen and these 
long gone lang sat things so yeah even if i didn't have them in the farm here the neighbor's got loads of them i could just wander in there and help myself but it just tastes nicer from your own farm i don't know why something more pleasurable about it It's definitely more pleasurable to be you know, eating a salad made of your own tomatoes than buying tomatoes in the shop. You get more of a sense of satisfaction out of it. Got a little mango tree here that's, that's going to get bigger. This year it had fruit for the first time. Few, not very many. Hopefully next year it should give a bit of fruit. As you can see, we do have a fair amount of fruit grown already and that, that's really good news. But we do hope to add to that quite a lot in the future. Careful in there, Pen. Be full of snakes. You get bitten. Got loads of junk to clear up. Bung Bung's out on patrol over there. They're barking at stuff. Gorgie's in here. And he's been sick. Hopefully, it's nothing serious. All right. He looks all right. Speaking of sick, sick things. See these buckets here? Well. Just splashed it on my foot that was a big mistake so like a year ago Penn's brother was here and he made like these homemade vitamins for the trees like homemade fertilizer it was all old food waste and it's been sitting in these pots for like a year it was it stunk right Penn had it around the back of the hut over there and it, it stunk so I've been wanting to chuck it out for a while but I thought well you know it's a waste if I chuck it out I may as well go and like put it around the trees a little bit maybe it'll help a little bit can smell it I think it's on my foot again so I kept spilling it on my hand by accident I was trying to like ladle it out around all the trees and anyway I think it's on my foot I can it stinks I really wish I hadn't kicked that thing so look right it went on my hands afterwards the smell would not go away and it it smelled like I don't know like a sewer pit like a cesspit all day my hands stunk of it. I kept scrubbing and scrubbing my hands. The smell wouldn't go away. I think it might even still be there now. It's disgusting. And then what happened is Bung Bung went and laid down in it next to one of the trees where I put it. When we put Bung Bung in the car last night, he stunk of it so hard. So Bung Bung had to get two baths last night. Absolutely scrubbed within an inch of his life. I've never met Penn's brother, but he's not my favourite person right now. Try and get the smell off my feet, it's disgusting. Come on in. Okay, so that's the bathroom floor, like stone looking stuff. Bathroom wall, again, stone looking stuff. Heavier than they look though, packets of tiles. So the kitchen stone is finished. Bung Bung, stop barking. I'm trying to do a video. So it's later in the day now. The, the kitchen stone people have just, just gone home. Um, generally, they did quite a nice job. It does make it look um, like quite a lot nicer. Yeah, once we've got all the tiles sorted, it should be all right. It's a couple of wobbles, like they've got like a, a chip in there, and well, they even cut slightly too much for the sink. Well, I think once we've got that fitted properly with a bit of silicone, it should hopefully hide all that, should be all right. We only paid 9,000 baht for this, so it's not terribly expensive. And well, I guess a slight imperfection or two is a forgivable, yeah, for forgivable at that price. Bun Bun, you filthy. Just mate of you. Naughty Bun Bun.
for the chat. Doggy, what's the matter with you? I've never seen such a filthy dog. Doggy, naughty. Naughty dog. <laughs> 